Hey everyone, it's Zeraldo here, and today I'm going to be talking about the new class. This is the second class they've released in a period of roughly two weeks, and I've basically finished recording this guide already. This is the last thing I've got to shoot, and the release has only been out for about two hours, so it sh this should be up roughly three hours after release. I'm just going to let you know that whenever there is a new class, I do my <clears throat> I do my best to get it out within about three hours of release, so today was no exception. It's an interesting class, it's member only, although the term member only might start to be less true because they've changed the name of members to legends. So this is the legendary hero class for the new sort of legend way of thinking about membership. As you can see it looks quite nice and shiny. It's just free for anyone who is a member or actually has been a member. So, although that's that you won't be able to get it if you've been a member until next week. I I do like the art. I think they've tried some interesting things with this class, although I think there are some things lacking about it, and it, it also just depends on how you use it. To get your Legendary Hero class, all you've got to do is come to Batlon and go to the Legendary class and then the Legends of Lore shop. As you can see, once you actually open the shop, it's all non-member AC. This is because they want it to be for every person who's ever been a member. You'll have to wait till next week to do that, though, because they only have it for the current members, and they're going to be adding an achievement badge through the Book of Law, which I might post on closer to the time. So it's really cool, and it's AC for infinite storage. For enhancing this class, I'd recommend either full fighter, full luck, or a combination between. Now, the damage was... the base damage for your normal non-crit attacks was quite lower when using luck, but the crits were significantly higher, and that can be fun. I'm not too sure about the chance of the crits actually occurring. I didn't have time to figure that out, but it's really up to personal preference. I prefer going with full fighter because of all the strength and I'll show you why in a second but full full luck or full fighter or a mix in between whatever set of enhancements you use if you've got access to the ore enhancements I definitely recommend health vampire the reason is this one's heal work although it's a good heal it works in a sort of weird way so definitely health vampire if you can get your own enhancements. Other than that, just use the appropriate enhancement. Now I'll talk about the passives, because these are pretty cool. If you just take a look, stats and classes. <laughs> Whoops. You've got two passives at rank 4, as per usual, and if you notice carefully, this reduces all damage taken by 15%, and increases your strength by 15%. Now because of that increase to strength, I'm lenient towards the fighter, because it just seems better, it, you get a much better advantage for your strength. Uh, Fighter also gives you a lot more health, which is something you need with this class, I feel. Especially because of that last move, which is an area of effect move. The rank 10 passive is actually really cool. It just doubles all your base stats for about 15 seconds. Now, I don't know if that means it'll double the number there, or, the, or if it includes these enhancement numbers. Even if it's only this, that's 50% increase here, the large increase here, and good increases to those. So it's an interesting passive. I don't know how often it occurs, but if, it, if it's one of those passives that actually occurs reasonably often enough, it could be quite helpful. That's what I'd recommend for enhancements. So your first move is called Starstruck. It costs 10 MP and has a 5 second cooldown. It does about more or less half of your normal damage. Now, it adds focus and stuff. Basically, it makes your opponent attack you. So this draws them to you. It also lowers your opponent's haste by 15%. And it also adds a stack of legendary. Now, I'll explain how that works soon enough. Second move is quite cool. It's called Lead the Charge. It costs twice as much mana, 20, and has 10 second cooldown. It increases your damage and your chance to hit your opponent by 10%. So it's all relatively simple moves so far. 
Your uh, third move, Stolen Thunder, just does a bunch of damage. Uh, I'd say roughly double to... So 200 or 250% your average strike. It also decreases your opponent's chance to crit by 25% for 20 seconds. Now that's useful. Some monsters are more likely to crit to others, so if you can identify that, that's helpful. But this will be more useful in PvP than anywhere else. So you've got your few little moves there. Now I'll just explain how Legendary works. It's an area of effect, it's called, not Legendary, I can find a move, it's called Legacy Crater and it's got quite a high MP cost of about 60, 45 second cooldown, so it's not something you can rely on. It attacks as many, I don't know how many enemies, but it attacks all three, so at least as much as your standard. And it does a powerful strike on the opponent you're currently facing and a less powerful on the rest and it's increased by each stack of legendary you have so I'll just demonstrate that now oh, and it also gives you a pretty good heal over time now if I just stack legendary like so a few stacks you'll see how different the move is Gotta get several stacks to make it really <laughs> worthwhile. I'll just make a comment. I quite like the art for this, but my one criticism is that they're calling this the legendary hero and it's clearly focused on the good theme, and they seem to forget that they've got a whole group of players that have actually sided with evil. So I think that's a bit of. that's something that could be corrected. Just make a legendary villain or something. There we go. I haven't actually been counting how many stacks, but you get the idea. We've got a few. And it keeps missing. <laughs> or the opponent keeps dodging. So, as you can see, we've got a few stacks of Legendary, and if we use that... 870. Now, that was because so many of the stacks missed. I've gotten about 1,400 from a non-crit before, with the current enhancements. So, you can see it is relatively effective. We'll just keep going and try use it a second time. Heal over time is quite welcome. Unfortunately the real downside to this heal over time is that it's necessary to survive all the hits you're going to be getting from mini monsters. So I'd suggest not using that unless you're you know facing a boss or you're in a group. Now, as you can see, Legendary does fade. Now, and you can see it also took a little bit to fade, so you do theoretically have a bit of time between monsters to move on to the next one. There is actually no limit to the amount of Legendary stacks. Now, I don't know if it works on a linear pattern and it goes up by the same amount of damage each time, or if the more stacks you get, the less effective oh, whoops, each individual stack is. But... I do know that it can prove handy. Now, it doesn't look like stacks actually affect the heal over time, so it's just going to affect damage. So if you can rig it to um, have a lot of stacks of legendary before you need to attack a large group and just have them all out in one go, that would probably be how it's used best. I can't imagine legendary is going to be entirely handy in PvP. It might help you hang in there for a bit, but you'd really have to have a large stack in PvP already, which might be a bit of a problem. One on one, the heal over time will help, and you've got a few moves like the decrit and the increasing your own chance to hit, which would come in handy. So I'll leave it there. It's a nice class, it's not incredibly powerful, but it's interesting, and I do quite like it, and it's nice to see that they've given members an exclusive class without an AC shortcut for non members for once.